Hey everyone, my name's Ella and I recently built a Windows PC. So now I'm here with a Windows 10 setup and customization video. Windows is seriously so, so customizable and I had a lot of fun setting up and customizing my PC to make it both aesthetic and functional. I'm gonna show you everything that I did in this video. But before we start, I wanna thank Wondershare Demo Creator for sponsoring this video. Demo Creator is an easy to use software that can screen record and video edit. It is available for Windows and Mac. For screen recording, you can select the area that you want to record. You can also connect a mic and a camera. And in the settings, you can change the FPS. You can also enable the screen drawing, which gives you a lot of tools while you're screen recording. For example, you can add captions, and use a spotlight to focus on certain things, and there's many more. I will be using Demo Creator to record today's video. Okay, so first I'm just going to do some basic customizations in Windows settings. In personalization, I can customize the wallpaper, lock screen, colors, and many more. This is the wallpaper that I'm going to go with. It is a 4K vector art and I really love it. I'll have a link to it down below. Now for my lock screen, I just set it to this nice, beautiful nature photo. This is actually a photo of Vancouver. And again, I will have a link to it down below. Now I'm in colors and after looking at both light and dark mode, I actually decide to go with light mode, which I know some of you might disagree with, but the dark mode just feels a little bit too dark for me. And for the accent color, I really like this shade of purple. It's called Iris Pastel. As you can see, all of these buttons and this text turned purple. You can also create your own custom accent color using this tool right here, but I really like this purple, so I'm just going to go with it. And finally, here at the bottom, I'm checking this option because it makes all of my title bars the accent color. I think it looks super pretty and I really like it. And lastly, because I don't think the taskbar looks aesthetic enough, I'm going into the taskbar to enable the option to automatically hide it. Okay, next I'm going to do the fun part, which is adding widgets. So I need an application called Raymeter for this. You can just type Raymeter into Google and you'll be able to find the download link. So the default widgets that I get with Raymeter are really not that impressive. But the great thing is there is a big and vibrant Raymeter Reddit community. People post their Raymeter desktops with all of the links of the different widgets that they use. And some of these designs seriously blew me away. Like it's just so good. So I highly recommend just browsing through the Raymeter Reddit for some inspiration. I actually spent like several hours just browsing through the Raymeter Reddit looking for widgets that I liked. And in the end, these are what I gathered. Now I'm downloading all of them and I actually decided to rename the folder name of each widget just because I downloaded a lot. So if you want to download a lot of widgets, then I also recommend doing this because it will just help you stay more organized. Okay, so after downloading and launching all of the widgets, they are going to appear here in the Raymeter app. And now I'm going to load each of the widgets onto my desktop so that I can start playing around with them. I'm just going to let you watch me customize everything. I certainly did a good amount of customizing. I will actually have the link to all of the widgets that I use down below. So if you see any widget that you like, then you can find it down below in my description. Some of these widgets can actually be further customized. If you ever need help with customizing a certain widget, then I suggest asking in the Raymeter Reddit community. And when you're happy with the widget and don't want to move it anymore, then just right click, go to settings and disable draggable so that you can no longer drag the widget. I also decided to hide my desktop icons to make my desktop look even more clean. Okay, so here is the finished result. Up here, I have my day and time along with my weather information. And then over here, I have these hexagon icons that are all clickable. I think they look super nice and clean. And over here on the right, 
I have my hardware usage info in these cute little circles. And down here is my favorite part of my entire desktop, which is my music player. So when I'm not playing any music, there's actually nothing here. But as soon as I start a song in Spotify, the title and the artist name pop up. This widget is actually interactable, so I can pause, go back, go forward, which is super nice and handy. I also have a very cool looking sound visualizer that I love and a little volume control over here on the side. So yeah, this is my desktop. I'm low-key kind of proud of myself and I really love how it turned out. Okay, and the last thing that I did was download Power Toys in order to improve Windows functionality. Again, if you just type Power Toys into Google, you'll be able to find a download link for it. There are many very useful tools inside of Power Toys. The first one is the color picker. When I press Windows, Shift and C, then I actually trigger this little tool that allows me to see the hex code of anything on my desktop. I know this may not be useful for everyone, but for me, especially when I'm editing my thumbnails, this can actually be super useful. And the next tool that I want to talk about is Fancy Zones. This allows me to create zones that my windows can snap to. And how this works is I just launch the layout editor in order to create my own layout. And after that, I just have to hold down the shift key and I can snap my windows to the zones that I created. I would really recommend this if you often look at multiple windows at the same time. I know I like to do that, so this is super useful for me. The next tool that I wanna point out is the keyboard manager. This allows for remapping keys or shortcuts. Now I'm not going to remap any keys, but if you're interested in doing this, then I recommend checking out an application called AutoHotKey because that will give you even more options. And the very the very last thing is the shortcut guide. So in case you forget or never knew any of the Windows shortcuts, then all you have to do is hold down the Windows key and it will show you all of the available shortcuts. Definitely pretty handy. Okay, so yeah, those are all of the customizations that I did to my Windows PC. I really hope that this was helpful and gave you some inspiration on Windows customization. Okay, and now I'm going to talk about the video editor of Demo Creator. So after you're done recording, you can import pour all of your clips into Demo Creator Video Editor. You can split the clip and delete the parts that you don't want. You can also crop the clip and speed it up in order to suit your editing style. You can add some text to explain the clip and the background color or the shadows of the text are all adjustable. There are many transitions to choose from. I really like the morph transition. I think it looks super cool. And you can even do a green screen if you need to. After you're done editing, you can just sign in and then export the video. Also, a new version, Demo Creator 5.0, is coming soon. This new version has many cool new features like built-in transition effects, animation text, templates, image masks, etc. If you're interested in using Demo Creator for your own videos, then you can check out my description where you will find a download link. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, then please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I really hope to see you in another one of my videos. Bye!